to the probability and statistics course. In our last lesson, we have seen uh, the need of describing characteristics of a sample in order to draw conclusions for the population from which they come. Uh, we have seen um, how to make uh, graphs, we have seen graphical methods for both quantitative and qualitative data. In this lesson, we are going to see how to describe data with numbers. In particular, we are going to see how to describe uh, quantitative data with numbers. So, the numerical measures uh, we will see are measures for the center of the data. We will see how to calculate the mean and the median, also how to measure the spread of the data, how to calculate quartiles and the standard deviation, and finally how to measure the symmetry of the data. We are going to learn how to calculate skewness and kurtzes. Now the most important numerical measures are the ones that measure the center and the spread of the data. For the center, as we said, we are going to see the mean and the median. And for the spread, we are going to see the quartiles and the standard deviation. Let's start by giving some data and calculate the mean and the median for this data. So we have that the mean number of sales of a product at a supermarket after 10 days, uh, the data are given here, can be calculated by using this formula given here. We have the sample mean, as it's called, the mean of the sample, which can be calculated by summing up all our data and divided by the number of um, the observations, the number of data we have. So for this example, we sum up all the data and divide by 10, as we have 10 points. And here the mean is calculated, the sample mean is calculated to be 36. Also, we are going to see the median. The median of the sample is actually the midpoint of the data. So for this example, for the sales, we have the data here. Now, in order to find the midpoint, we need to put the data in order, first of all. So we reorder the data from the smallest value to the highest. We see here, this is very important. And we count where is the midpoint. Now here we see because we have 10 data, the midpoint actually is between 34 and 35. So if we don't find a single point as the midpoint, what we do is that we, we are going to take the average of the two values that we find. So for this, we take the average of 34 and 35, which is 34.5. And this is the median of our sample. Let's look at a graph, see what the mean and the median means graphically. We have created a histogram. We've seen in our last lesson how we can create histograms for given data. And we see here that the median 34.5 and the mean 36. So it's almost at the center 
of our, of our graph. The uh, median is exactly at the center. Um, the mean as well gives us measures the center of um, the graph of the histogram we've seen here. Now, what we do is that we create a new set of data. Now, the new set of data is the original ones if we add up 10. So, where we have, where we had the point 23, now we have the point 33, and so on. And for this new data, we see that the new mean and median has also been moved by 10 points. The new mean now is 46 and the new median is 44.5. Although we see exactly the same picture as before, we see that the data have been moved 10 points. This corresponds to a shift in our graph to a shift in the median and the mean. So we see here, although we see exactly the same picture as before, we do not have the same median and the same mean for this new set of data. Now we are going to see another set of data and calculate the mean and the median for uh, this example we are going to show. We have that. We record the time that takes a student to drive from home to university. And um, we record this for 10 consecutive days. So the data we have recorded are, we write them down, now the time is calculated in minutes and round it up and the data we have are given here. Now the first thing to do is uh, to calculate the mean. In order to calculate the mean for these data we do not need to order them. We are going to do it later when we calculate the median. Let's find the mean. Now the mean for this, the sample mean, denoted by x bar, will be equal to, we add up these numbers, and we divide by the number of data we have. In this case, we have 10 data. And so we find that the mean is 8. Now we are going to calculate the median. We said before that in order to calculate the median, we have to reorder to order our data from the smallest value to the highest. If we do not do that, then every time we uh, change the order of the data, we may find a new median, a different median. And of course, this is not correct. There is only one media for each set of data. So we reorder the data. We have actually three fives in the data, three six, an eight, two nine, and one twenty one. So ten points here. We find that the median as before is somewhere between here. It doesn't matter that we observe the same uh, number for this data. The same way 
we can calculate um, the average of the two, which of course is 6. So for this data set, the median is 6. The median usually denoted by the capital letter M, I rewrite the sample mean and we have that this is 8. Now, what happens with these two measures? Why for this um, example we have seen here, we have so a uh, big difference. Why did the sample mean uh, came out to, to be 8 and the median 6? Well, we expect that uh, if the data are symmetric, then the mean and the median would be exactly the same. If the data are not symmetric, but they have some irregularities, some uh, extreme values, as we say, very large values or very small values, then the mean will be affected. So if um, we do not want, when we uh, measure the center of the data, to take into account these irregularities, we should use the median as a measure of the center. On the other hand, if we are sure that the data, um, the irregularities are not because of wrong uh, data, because we wrote uh, down a wrong number, then uh, we may want to take into account this information. And then we should use uh, the mean. Now, which one of the two each uh, we are going to use in order to measure the center of the data, uh, it's not a definite, there is no definite answer. It depends on the data, it depends on what information we want to pass, and, but in any case, we should first start by making a graph of, of our data. So in this way, we are going to know if there are irregularities or not. If we further investigate the reason of the irregularities, we can then understand uh, if we need to include this information in the data, if we want to uh, measure, to, uh, to calculate the mean or the median for this uh, specific set of data. Now, Let's go in and see how we can measure the spread of a data set. First, we are going to see how to calculate quartiles. The first and the third quartile. What happens is that we divide the data in half, and so we have the first half, the, the first five numbers, then we have the second half, the second five numbers, and now the first quartile for this data set will actually be the median of the five numbers. So it will be the half point of this, the middle point of this data will be number 25. This will be our first quartile. Also, for the remain, remaining uh, five numbers, we see here that uh, the midpoint is 45. So the third quartile is 45. In order to measure the spread, we take out from the third quartile, the first quartile. And so we have 20. We have calculated here 45 minus 25 equals 20. And this is called the interquartile range. Now, also, someone can use the standard deviation. The standard deviation will be the square root of the variance, 
As we have said before, for the random variables, uh, we use the standard deviation because uh, it's um, the same units as our original data, whereas the variance is our units squared, so it is preferable to use the standard deviation. How it can be calculated? We have that. The variance, the sample variance, the variance of a sample, can be calculated by summing up the difference squared of the data from the mean. So we have each data point, take out the sample mean, which you have calculated, square the values, and divide by n minus 1. The standard deviation, as we know, it's going to be now the square root of the variance. So the square root of what we had before. Now we are going to uh, calculate the standard deviation for an example and the variance for an example. But before that, I am going to write another formula to calculate uh, the standard deviation, which sometimes is a little bit easier than the one we have given here. So we can actually use that the standard deviation, the variance, can be um, calculated by summing up and squaring the values we have taking out 1 over n, the sum of the values squared, and dividing by n minus 1. So let's see now the data we had before, how we can calculate the standard deviation and the variance for them. So our data here, we use uh, the formula, the second formula, and we find that the variance of this data is calculated to be 111.11. And so the standard deviation will be the square root of this, which is 10.54. Let's have a look at the graph, what's going on. The quartiles first, we remember that uh, the first quartile was 25 for this set of data. And the third quartile was 45 for this uh, set of data. Now, I am going to change a bit the data set we had. I'm going to change a few values and see what happens with the standard deviation and the variance. So I have a new set of data. The thing here is that this set of data has the same mean as the data we, we saw before and the same median. So if somebody had told us um, the mean or the median of this data set, we would have exactly the same information for this data, data set as we had for the other data set. Although, if we look at the data carefully, we see that they are not the same. Let's calculate now the standard deviation and the variance to see, and the quartiles to see what happens. We have that. The variance, now it's 261.77. Uh, and the standard deviation is 16.18. And the quartiles this time is 24, the first quartile, and 45, the third quartile. And so, and so if we look also at the graph, we see now that the data actually, they are more spread 
than the data we had before. So although we have the same center in the data, we do not have the same spread. That's why uh, this uh, it's obvious if we look at the data carefully. So now by giving the standard deviation uh, or the variance of the data, we can understand that actually we have a different set. For this data, graphically we can see that the quartile now, it's 24, it's not 25 as it was before, and 45 the third quartile. So the spread is slightly bigger. Now, the difference uh, that it, it's, uh, this data is more spread than the other set is more obvious in the calculation of the standard deviation uh, and in the variance. Because as before, as for the mean and the median, the standard deviation and the variance takes into account irregularities of the data. Whereas uh, the quartiles uh, may not take into account these irregularities. So for this data, because we actually have uh, data more larger or more smaller in values than the ones we had before, we can see that um, the spread is more obvious that it is bigger in the second set if we uh, calculate the variance or the standard deviation. Again, as for the mean and the median, we choose the measure. It's more appropriate. We think it's more appropriate for the data we have and for the information we want to pass um, to know about our data. So now we are going to calculate um, the standard deviation, the variance and the quartiles for the, our data set, the set we worked through previously for the mean and the median. So we have that. I rewrite the ordered data. We remember that we have seen the median is here. And now we split this data set into two. And we have the first group and the second group. For this group, the median, the first quartile now of the whole set of data is the median of this set. So the first quartile is 5. And the third quartile for the set of data we have is the median for the second group. So the third quartile is 9. And the interquartile range for this data set is so 9 minus 5 is 4. Now let's calculate the variance and the standard deviation for this set of data. We have that, we have calculated that x bar is 8. So we are going to use now the formula, we've seen the first formula we've seen because um, we see that the calculations are a bit easier for this case. We have that for the variance denoted by s squared. We have 1 minus 1 over n minus 1, 10 data, 1 over 9. And we have now, we take each data point, take out 8, which is the mean, and square. So what we have is 3 squared, the minus or the plus sign doesn't make a difference as our numbers are squared, so we, just, we can just ignore if it's a minus or a plus side for the variance. And we have that this, actually the number we are looking for, 
can be calculated by summing up the numbers here. And we have that this is 210 over 9. Now, the standard deviation is the square root of this data. So, the standard deviation will be 4.83. Now, we remember that we, uh, we actually used the quartiles in our last lesson when we plotted, um, when we had the box plot. We remember that the box was, was starting from the first quartile up to the third quartile, which uh, included um, almost half of the data, half of our data. Now, what happens is that in the case that the data um, are symmetrical, this box will actually contain most of the information of our data. The, uh, so the quartiles uh, contain, the interquartile range contains most information of our data. Now we are going to see how we can measure uh, symmetry of our data. We have that. The symmetry, a new numerical measure, can be a measure, we can measure for the symmetry, the skewness and the kurtosis. We are going to see what the skewness and the kurtosis is. We just uh, say here that actually what we measure about um, the skewness and the kurtosis is that we compare our data with data that we assume that they come from a normal distribution. So if we had data that they come from a normal distribution, we would expect a nice Bell uh, symmetrical um, image. And what we do is that we measure how, how the data uh, look like if they, are, they have the same symmetry as data that they would come from a normal distribution and the same skewness or not as data that they come from, the same, uh, from a normal distribution. Let's see. So skewness can't be calculated from this uh, formula here. And kurtosis can be calculated from this formula here. We see this part looks like uh, the variance, but it's to the power of third here and divide by n, not by n minus 1 as the variance. And the same way, this is the same as here, but this we have fourth power. And we divide by the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation to the third power, and here by the sample standard deviation to the fourth power. We are going to have a look what we mean graphically by skewness and kurtosis. So here we have a normal um, distribution, normal graph. So if data would come from a normal uh, distribution, they should look like something like this. And if they would come from normal distribution, their skewness should be close to zero. Now, if the data have skewness greater than zero, it means that uh, they look as they are a little bit skewed to the left. If their skewness is less than zero, then they look like they are skewed to the right 
compared with a normal distribution, compared with data that they come from a normal distribution with the same uh, mean and the same variance as the one calculated for this data set. Now, the kurtosis. We have that the kurtosis measures how pointy the uh, distribution is. So the normal distribution is, uh, we see it's a bit pointy, and it has been calculated that if data come from normal distribution, their kurtosis should be close to 3. Now, if their kurtosis is greater than 3, then they should look like they are, uh, they are distributed a bit more pointy, the distribution, than the normal, and less pointy the distribution than the normal if the kurtosis is less than 3. We are going now to calculate the skewness and the kurtosis for the data set we have worked, for the example we have worked. So we have that we calculate first the skewness, we rewrite the formula, we have that, this is 1 over n, sum xi minus x bar, the sample mean, to the third over this. Now, we are careful here, we have the third power, so it means that um, uh, any negative signs we get, we should be careful. Uh, they will make a difference if we have negative or positive signs. So for here, we calculate that this is equal to 1 over 10 times minus 3 would be this difference to the third plus minus 3 to the third plus minus 3 to the third. And so on then we have minus 2 to the third plus plus minus 2 to the third and go on for all data points and now this should be divided um, by this number first of all so that we don't write it um, we write it one by one I write here that we calculate this so all summations we mean that they start from 1 and they go up to uh, n, up to 10 for this, for this uh, data. And we have that, this is calculated to be 209.4. And so, if we divide by the sample standard deviation to the third, we have that this will be equal to 1.8. 86. So compared with number 0, which you would expect uh, to have calculated for this data set if they were coming from uh, a population, um, normal population, from a normal uh, distribution, we see that actually, we see, as we had seen in the histogram as well, we had an idea that we wouldn't have calculated zero, we see that actually the data uh, do not have skewness zero. Now, let's calculate the kurtosis. The kurtosis for this data set, we rewrite as before, now it's fourth power, Again, the signs in the data would not make a difference. So this, first calculate this part.
equals to 1 over 10, we have 3. We do not include um, signs here. We said it doesn't make, make a difference because we have the fourth power. And this can be calculated to be 2,885.4. And so the courtesies for this data, it's calculated to be 5.3. Compared with value 3, we see that actually this data uh, would come from a population which uh, the, dis the distribution is more pointy than the normal distribution. Now, what we have seen in this lesson are numerical measures for quantita quantitative data. We have seen how to measure the center by calculating the mean and by calculating the median. We have seen the differences between the mean and the median, when the mean is better, when the median is better for data set. We have seen how to measure the spread of a data set, how to calculate quartiles and the standard deviation. Finally, we saw how to measure the symmetry, how to measure the symmetry in comparison with the normal distribution. In particular, how to calculate the skewness and how to calculate the kurtosis. Now, we could have skewness and kurtosis compared, as we have seen uh, in this uh, example, that they are not the same with the normal. So we could have a data set which they do not have skewness 0 and they do not have uh, kurtosis 3, but we could have other data set that they may be skewed, but their kurtosis is 3, or they could be uh, non-skewed and their kurtosis not to be 3. For more information on this lesson, you can visit the webpage of Netuno MedNetU project.